I'll take a moment to thank uh, Brother David and the elders, and I want to thank y'all for coming out to hear me speak tonight. <coughs> now, I have a question for you. Who all here is afraid of the dark? By show of hands. Anybody? All right. Well, let me tell you, I am petrified of the dark. I hate it. My dad always says it's silly because there's nothing in the dark that isn't there in the daylight. And he's probably right, but that don't make me any less afraid of it. Now, most of y'all know that I love to deer hunt. But see, loving to deer hunt poses a problem for me. If you know anything about deer hunting, you know that you need to be in the stand before daylight, which means walking in the woods in the dark. Now, when you're afraid of the dark, that's a big problem. My heart goes to racing so bad, it takes my breath away. I mean, I can hear it beating in my ears. And if you have fear of anything, you know what I'm talking about. The way Dad and I hunt, he drops me off on the side of the road where I'm going to hunt, then he drives on to where he's going to hunt. Well, you may be thinking, you've got a gun, so what do you have to be afraid of? Okay, yes, I do have a gun and I do have bullets, but it's illegal to be on a public road with a loaded rifle. So I can't load my gun until I get to the edge of the woods. Let me tell you though, I have this down to a science. It takes me about 40 to 45 seconds to get to where I'm legal to load my rifle, and another 20 to 30 to get the bullets in the gun. But I promise you that one minute, 15 seconds feels like forever. All I can think of is that something big, bad, and ugly is going to jump out and get me, and then I'm done for. So, I mean, I have all I need to protect myself, but without the bullets, my gun is useless. But once I'm in the stand with my loaded rifle, it's not long before the sun comes up. My heart stops racing. The tightness in my chest goes away and all my fears disappear with the darkness. I can see my surroundings. I'm comfortable and safe, I'm at peace. And that's just a pretty good feeling. There is nothing like being in the light. Let's see what the Holy Spirit inspired John to write in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. What does it mean to walk in the light? Is it minding mom and dad? Is it doing my homework? Is it being a good guy? Well, that's part of it, but the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the light. John 8:12 says, Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now, Jesus Christ said, He is the light. So how do we get in the light? In Jesus Christ. During every service, Brother David gives us scripture on how to be in the light. Most of us can quote the plan of salvation in our sleep. Hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized, and live faithfully. That's how we get in the light. But a lot of the time, before the close of the lesson, we start packing up our Bibles or reaching for the songbooks, just not paying attention. There have been times when I've worked till 12 o'clock and my dad has smacked me in the back of the head because I was just simply not paying attention. I was asleep. Brother Jeff, you know what I'm talking about. You've seen him do it. <laughs> But in all seriousness, I get down on myself for that. I think to myself, how would God feel about my worship? And it reminds me of a passage that my dad has quoted to me many times and that I've read. It's found in Matthew chapter 15, verses 7 through 8. Ye hypocrites, well did Esaias prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. Friends, where is our heart tonight? Where has our heart been? Where was our heart when we were taking the Lord's Supper this morning? Where was our heart when we were singing praises to God? 
Psalms 57, 7 says, My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Did you know that there are over 500,000 open heart surgeries done each year in the United States alone? Folks, there's only 365 days in a year, so that's roughly 1,370 per day. There are 3,200 heart transplants done each year in the United States, and many more are still waiting because of the shortage of donors. How many people do you know that has had heart trouble? We've been praying for Brother Barry Wren, Brother Jerry Moore, and Brother Hester, and that's just a few that I can name off the top of my head. I'm sure y'all know more. We, we pay doctors thousands of dollars to open us up, hook us up to machines, and hold, their ha hold our heart in their hands. We want our hearts fixed. But what about our spiritual hearts? Where are they at tonight? What kind of shape are they in? Do you know anybody who is spiritually sick? And if you do, have you been praying for them? We can't be in the light unless we live faithfully with our hearts fixed on God. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, beginning. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And when the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. Friends, I don't want to fall in the ditch. I want to be in the light. I don't want my worship to be in vain. Because we all know what happens to those who are rooted up. Matthew 25, verse 30, and Matthew 8, 12 both say, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. The church is the kingdom. According to these scriptures, there will be children of the kingdom cast into outer darkness if we are unprofitable servants. Folks, I'm afraid of the dark. How about you? Are we doing what we're supposed to, or are we packing our Bibles? Are we getting ready to go up on the hill, or are we still paying attention? More importantly, are our hearts fixed on the Word of God? Colossians chapter 2, verse 7 says, Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding, which means growing. Therein with thanksgiving. Are we growing? Or are we just going through the motions? Friends, I'm afraid of the dark. James chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is nigh. But 2 Peter 3 9 tells us that the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We know that God keeps his promises. Can't tell a lie. We are all going to live in eternity for the exact same amount of time, forever. But the choice is with us right now. We have to choose whether we want to live in the light with God or be cast into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm afraid of the dark. I don't know about you, but that makes my heart flutter. Friends, we have everything we need right here to fix your spiritual hearts so that we can walk in the light with God for free. It's already been paid for. There's no recovery time, and instead of a long procedure, it only takes a short walk in a humble spirit. We will pray for you if you need the prayers of the congregation. And if you need to be baptized, the water is warm and ready. If you're in the dark, you can walk in the light and not have to be afraid anymore. Why don't you come while together we stand and sing?